Good evening and welcome to the U.S. Senate debate hosted by Arizona PBS and Clean Elections. I'm Ted Simons and tonight we feature a debate among the candidates for U.S. Senate in a race that's widely being watched as it will help determine which party will control the Senate. Our debate rules tonight are that each candidate will get 90 seconds to answer a question with 45 second rebuttal periods. Each candidate also gets a one minute opening and closing statement with closing statements going in reverse order of the opening remarks. Now for tonight's debate in alphabetical order, we welcome Democratic incumbent Senator Mark Kelly, a retired astronaut with NASA. He also served in the U.S. Navy. Republican Blake Masters, an attorney, businessman, and author, and a member of the Trump 2016 transition team. And Libertarian Mark Victor, an attorney who served in the U.S. Marine Corps. Let's get things started with opening statements, and we begin with Blake Masters. Hi, I'm Blake Masters. I'm running to be your next senator because our current senator, Mark Kelly, has messed everything up. Our border is in chaos. We've got drugs and illegal aliens just pouring in. Crime is up. The cost of groceries, actually the cost of everything you need to live, keeps going up and up. It wasn't like this two years ago. What changed? Well, Joe Biden took over. And in Washington, Mark Kelly backs Joe Biden every single time, without thinking twice, without thinking of Arizona. And you know, it's not what he said he'd do. Two years ago, Mark Kelly stood right there and he promised to be independent, but he broke that promise. My wife, Catherine, and I grew up right here in Arizona. We're raising our three little boys here now, and we're sick of seeing Arizona families suffer just because Mark Kelly wants to fit in in DC. Send me to the US Senate, and I will put Arizona families first. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we turn to Mark Victor. Live and let live. That's my position on every issue. Live your life however you choose. Just let other people do the same thing. My name is Mark J. Victor, and if you're tired of the same old politics, I'm your guy. I'm a proud Marine Corps combat veteran, and for the last 28 years, I've been thinking outside the box as a criminal defense attorney. But the most important thing I've done was found the Live and Let Live Global Peace Movement. We got two rules. Don't infringe on anybody's freedoms. And let's just inspire people to be good humans. The Republicans and the Democrats together, both are responsible for $31 trillion in debt and the highest inflation we've seen in 40 years. Unnecessary wars, a mismanaged pandemic, and a tribalism that is tearing us apart. One of them kisses Biden's ring, the other kisses Trump's ring. I don't kiss anybody's ring. Unlike my opponents, I am not here to impose my personal views on anyone. I'd be honored to tell you about my plan to achieve freedom and peace for everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. And for our last opening statement, we hear from Mark Kelly. Ted, thank you. Uh, Blake and Mark, good to meet you both. You know, growing up, we didn't have a lot of money. My parents were both cops, and they taught me about public service. I spent 10 years in the United I spent 25 years in the United States Navy as a combat pilot and as an astronaut. Two years ago, you sent me to the United States Senate to cut through the red tape and get things done for Arizona. Now, we have more work to do. Families are struggling and often can't afford gas or prescription medication. So I worked with Republicans to, to bring manufacturing back to America to cut costs. And when Democrats are wrong, like on the border, I call them out on it because I'm always going to stick up for Arizona. Blake Masters, my opponent, on the other hand, has some beliefs that are just dangerous for Arizonans. He celebrated when Arizona enacted a national, enacted an abortion ban. And he wants to privatize your Social Security, sending your savings to Wall Street. So, Ted, this is an important conversation. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Let's get things started. Senator, we'll start with you. Inflation is at uh, generational highs. Uh, could be going even higher considering OPEC's actions here this week mm -hmm. regarding the uh, crude uh, production. Why are consumer prices so high? 
What have you done to address this issue? Yeah, first of all, Ted, let me start by saying, as a kid, you know, I remember my mom sitting at the kitchen table, you know, with all the bills spread out with one of those giant calculators, trying to figure out, you know, what bill is she going to pay? And it was really challenging for her. In that period of time, you know, she could only put about $2 of gas in the car, you know, at the time. So I, I know what people are going through. And I know it's hard. That's why I've worked to cut costs. Hey, when the, uh, when the president, when the Biden administration refused to increase oil and gas production, I told him he was wrong. And when prescription drugs are just skyrocketed and seniors can't afford it, I stood up to big pharma to cut costs. Now, my opponent, Blake Masters, I mean, the issue we have here is that this issue affects seniors more than anybody else, seniors that are on a fixed income. And my opponent, you know, he wants to privatize Social Security. He said private accounts sending your earnings to Wall Street. I met this uh, older gentleman in Parker not too long ago, and he came up to me and he said, he said, hey, please do not take away my Social Security. I don't know what I will do. For however long I'm in the United States Senate, I'm going to protect your Social Security and Medicare. My opponent said he wants to cut the knot and privatize your Social Security, sending your hard-earned dollars to Wall Street. Blake Masters, 90 seconds. We're talking inflation here. Why is inflation, why are consumer prices so high, and what would you do about it? Let's be clear, the greatest threat to seniors' retirement today is the massive, crushing inflation that Joe Biden and Mark Kelly caused. And it's their fault, they caused it. Two years ago, inflation was one and a half percent. Now, in the greater Phoenix metro area, we are suffering from literally the worst inflation in the nation at 13%. Joe Biden's policies caused this, and those are policies that Mark Kelly in Washington has supported every single time. So look, first, they declared war on oil and gas. Well. What they think was going to happen when you declare war on oil and gas in a country that is still mostly powered by oil and gas, you think that's going to send the price of energy to the moon? Well, yeah, it did. They took gas from $2 to $6. Now they want a prize because it's back in the $5. No, when you make energy too expensive, well, everything you need to live takes energy to make or to move. You make energy expensive, you get some inflation. That was the left hook. Well, the Democrats weren't done. Then they decided to print $6 trillion. They print and spent $6 trillion too quickly. The normal person understands that PhD economists don't, apparently. Senators don't. But when you print a trillion dollars, that makes every dollar in your wallet worth less and less. It sends prices at the supermarket skyrocketing. So, no, they caused this crushing inflation, and it is ruining people's lives. I had parents come up to me two weeks ago at a campaign event. They said, Blake, we don't eat breakfast anymore. We drink coffee. We drink coffee so that we can afford to feed our kids breakfast. And that's on you, sir. This is the Joe Biden, Mark Kelly economy. I will put a stop to Joe Biden's crazy spending. Mark Victor, 90 seconds. Inflation, what's going on? Look, people are hurting right now. Inflation hurts the poor the worst. It's a tax on everything. Why is this happening? It's happening because of both the Republicans and the Democrats. It's their foolish economic policies. Look, don't confuse money with wealth. They're not the same thing. Wealth that's what's produced and what's consumed. Printing and distributing money doesn't make us richer. Doubling the money supply doesn't make us twice as rich. Printing money results in more dollars to buy the same amount of goods, and that's what raises prices. Both the Republicans and the Democrats, both of them, have been recklessly printing money. It's not just this administration. It's Bush, it's Obama, it's Trump, it's Biden. They have all increased spending. They have all increased the debt. The Republicans just had control of everything. They increased spending, they increased the debt. This has been exacerbated, by the way, by forced business closings during COVID. These are probably unconstitutional, but they messed up our supply chain and it contracted the number of goods. When you print more money and throw it in the economy and you reduce the 
supply of goods, what you get is out of control inflation. And no, you can't just pass more spending and call it the Inflation Reduction Act and think you are going to fix inflation. You know what fixes this? Free markets. That's what raises standards of living. We need to cut taxes. We need to cut spending. We need to cut regulation. We are stealing from future generations. It's obscene, it's immoral, and it needs to stop. All right, Mark, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Mark Kelly, uh, it sounds as if, 45 seconds now for rebuttal right. from what you've heard. Um, I heard uh, that you caused this. You well, caused two and a half inflation. years ago, we went through something unprecedented. You know, COVID-19. Schools had a shutdown. Businesses shut down. Across Arizona, we have half a million small businesses. You know, sometimes the federal government has to step in to save small business. You know, they have to step in to protect livelihoods. You know, I, my office, uh, folks that, that work for me, you know, were very active in helping small businesses like Tres Leches Cafe in Phoenix stay open or Naughton's in Tucson. Um, we've got to get our debt and deficit under control. That's why in the Inflation, Inflation Reduction Act reduces the deficit by hundreds of billions of dollars. At the same time, I was able to stand up to Big Pharma and cut the prescription drug costs for seniors, capping it at $2,000 a year, spread out over the year. This is something my opponent, Blake Masters, has opposed. Seniors are struggling. Social Security and prescription drugs hits them harder than anybody else. Okay. And my opponent, Blake Masters, wants to privatize their Social Security, okay. sending that money to Watt. We've got to 45 Wall. seconds here. Um, uh, the idea of printing money, you mentioned that. Was money, did we not need money to be printed considering the COVID pandemic that we were dealing with? That's what I'm hearing here. Joe Biden is spending like a drunken sailor and at every single opportunity, Mark Kelly just says yes. He can't say no to Chuck Schumer. He can't say no to Joe Biden. At least Senator Sinema stopped Build Back Better. My gosh, you were ready to vote for that. That would have just ruined our economy even worse. I know Senator Sinema caved on the Inflation Reduction Act, and I'm mad at her for that. But hey, isn't it interesting that you had to wonder which way she was going to vote? You never have to wonder which way Senator Kelly is going to vote, because any spending bill that Biden puts in front of him, he will sign. So yeah, we got the Inflation Reduction Act, and Mark Kelly was the deciding vote. He hired 87,000 new IRS agents. Mark Kelly voted to send stimulus checks to illegal aliens. He voted to send stimulus checks to get this, violent felons sitting in jail. Is that a good use of taxpayer money? I don't think so. Think about that the next time you go to the grocery store and you can't afford to buy steak or eggs. Uh, let me get a quick yeah. response to that. Yeah, that, yeah that, that, that's not true. Which part? Well, and the, the, well, a lot of it. But the IRS part, you know, we need folks in government to go after big businesses and the wealthiest Americans who try to cheat on their taxes, that have armies of accountants and lawyers. You know, that's the intention, you know, here, because if we can't collect taxes from the wealthiest Americans and the largest corporations that are cheating on their taxes, you know who pays? Middle-class Americans pay. He said it himself. He wants 87,000 IRS. Hold on, hold on for just a second. Get, you're going to get a second. Hold on. So relax. So, you know, what, what he is proposing is a system that... You know, the little guy has to pay more, middle class Americans and working class Amer Americans. We need to make sure that big business and it's, it's, it's pretty obvious when you look at the background of each of us, oh. you know, with regards to like, you know, things like, you know, ethics reform and corporate PAC money. I've never taken a dollar of corporate PAC money my entire time in the last campaign and in office. We, and we, and so I'm never going to be standing up for big businesses. I'm going to be standing up for Arizona. We need to stop you right there. All right. Uh, again, uh, respond. Can I have 45? Yes, you do. The people of Arizona know that those 87,000 IRS agents that you're sicking on them, they're not just going after billionaires. They're not just going after big business. They're going to be auditing you. They're going to be auditing your small businesses this time next year. Senator Kelly voted for 87,000 new IRS agents in the Inflation Reduction Act. But to do that, first he had to reject, there was an amendment, he rejected hiring 18,000 more Border Patrol agents. Mark Kelly said no to 18,000 more Border Patrol agents, but yes to 87,000 new IRS agents. That shows you what his priorities are. Mark Kelly left our southern border wide open, voted for all the trillions in spending that caused this massive inflation, and he thinks the fix is 87,000 new IRS agents. Something Mark, tells me that's not going to work I out. Get right? Mark, I want to get Mark in here for a second, then. Right. I want to get back to you. Right. Uh, Thank you, Ted. You know, I want to speak up on behalf 
of the drunken sailor. Because drunken sailors, there's a limit to how much money a drunken sailor can spend. That isn't the problem here. The problem here is we don't have sound money anymore in our country. That's the reason these guys are bickering about spending more and more and more money, because there is no limit to how much our government can continue to print and spend. We need to get back to sound money again so the government can't continue to have no limit on their credit card. That's the problem with our economy. There are always things to spend more money on. There will be a never-ending list. Do we want to get a control on our economy? We need to get back to a free market in sound money. Okay, uh, Marco, back the idea of uh, IRS agents over border agents. Well, you know, I've spent a lot of time on our southern border, and let me just say, it's a mess. It's a chaos. It's crisis after crisis. Um, I worked in, in Washington to bring more Border Patrol agents to the state of Arizona. A billion dollars for staffing and security, security and monitoring systems. Um, so this, this premise that he's taken, voting against Border Patrol agents, I've worked hard to make sure we have the money so we have more Border Patrol, Patrol agents on the ground. And that's what we have today. Respond, please. Did you or did you not vote to reject 18,000 more Border Patrol agents in the Inflation Reduction Act passage? Senator. You know, we... we there it is right there. There. Are, there are votes that happen in D.C. that have nothing to do with Border Patrol agents, and it might have the title on it, and nothing happens, right? So what I have done is I got a billion dollars more for Border Patrol agents for staffing you know, for the technical systems to monitor the border. And where they make sense to, to build more border barriers at the southern border. Are you cherry that, that's, my, that, that's my record, which is I've been strong on border security, and I've stood up to Democrats when they're wrong on this issue. It sounds like you Including, by the way, yes. including the president. You know, when the president decided he was going to do something dumb on this and change the rules, you know, that would create a bigger crisis, you know, I told him he was wrong. So I've pushed back on this administration multiple times, and I've got more money on the ground to increase Border Patrol staffing, it, technology, and where it makes sense to build more barriers. It sounds like he says you're cherry-picking here. He voted against hiring 18,000 more Border Patrol agents and then said yes to 87,000 new IRS agents. I'm sure we're going to talk more about the border. I just want to ask one question. Sir, have you done everything in your power to secure our southern border? I've been focused on the border since day one on this job. I'm down there all the time. I was on the phone this week just, you know, with Mayor Nichols of Yuma, Sheriff Daniels of Cochise County, talking about what more we need for Border Patrol and immigration. That, my friends, we're is working, called evasion. We're, we're, we're working to raise Border Patrol pay by 18 18 percent. I've got legislation to do that. I've been focused on the border since day one. OK, you, I, you know, we know great effects because we have a wide open southern border. So if that's the best you it, can do, I respectfully request you resign been, and let's get someone in the seat who will actually secure our border. Washington, D.C. has failed on this issue of border security and immigration for decades. And it's been crisis after crisis. I've been focused on this since day one, you know, and I bought I brought more resources here to the state of Arizona to deal with this Let, issue. Let's, let's continue to focus on immigration. We'll go 90 seconds here. Uh, Blake, uh, we'll start with you. Um, immigration reform. Uh, I hear border security mentioned a lot. You have mentioned border security. You want to secure the border. How would you know when the border is secure? How do we know when the border is secure? Well, call me old fashioned, but I think the correct amount of illegal immigration is zero. That's what federal law says. The problem is that Joe Biden and Mark Kelly are willfully ignoring federal law. They've surrendered our southern border. They've given it up to the Mexican drug cartels. We had operational control two years ago, and now it's just a complete disaster. They incentivize people to break the law. Illegal aliens, when they come here, they're supposed to be caught and deported back to their home country or back to some other country that wants them. But no, Joe Biden and Mark Kelly, they laid out the welcome mat. This is the greatest country in the history of the world. If you invite everybody to come here, you'll create a crisis. And so 5 million illegals, literally 5 million, have come here in the last 22 months. Joe Biden and Mark Kelly have welcomed them. When these people cross, they know not only will they not be deported, but they're given envelopes with cash, plane tickets. Here's a hotel room in Scottsdale. 
We treat these people better than we treat our own U.S. military service members. I find that shameful. 300,000 come through every month. It's a humanitarian disaster. The women and children are raped. The men are indentured servants sold into some kind of slavery. And it's not just the people, it's the drugs, the fentanyl that's coming through. It's killing kids. We're losing 2,000 Arizonans every year to fentanyl. This stuff is poison. It's coming right there up through the southern border. And Mark Kelly and Joe Biden have not done a single thing to stop it. It is carnage. And so I think we should secure the border. That means a wall. It means doubling the size of Border Patrol. And it means let's get back to deporting people who try to break into our country, something that Mark Kelly routinely votes against. We'll get to Mark Kelly in a second here. But Mark Victor, as far as immigration reform is concerned, walls, uh, more border agents, what say you? Ted, how long are we going to keep talking about this same problem? Yeah. Administration after administration after administration, they're bickering about securing the border and spending money, but nobody ever gets it done. We need to get it done. I'm in favor of a comprehensive overhaul of the entire immigration policy. It doesn't have to be very confusing. We had a great immigration policy in this country in the late 1800s, early 1900s. In fact, we didn't even have a term, illegal immigration. It was just immigration. It wasn't a big deal. We welcomed immigrants to America. Most of the people who come to America, and I've been representing many of them, over the last 28 years. The vast majority of them are great people. They come here to work, to pursue the American dream. But they should get nothing when they come here besides the right to peacefully pursue their happiness. Nobody has a right to live at the expense of another person. They should get no welfare or social programs at all. But we do need to immediately secure the border. Nobody has a right to aggress against anybody else, whether they're inside or outside the border. Let's try to keep the bad guys out. We should streamline the asylum process. It's ridiculous that it takes so long to get a reasonably simple hearing done. I am very pro-immigration. It's good for America. It helps our economy. We've got demographic issues as well. We need more younger workers. Can you imagine our situation? We've got a huge labor shortage right now. We got lots of immigrants who want to work. We can't get a visa program so they can actually work. Let's get them to work. This is why Sheriff Hathaway in Santa Cruz County endorsed me because I've got a plan. There is no perfect solution here, but we need a path to citizenship as well. Okay, I wait. do not want to tear families apart and, and who are is, here in working and are law abiding. That, we should not be deporting. That them. is time. Uh, 90 seconds, uh, Mark Kelly. Immigration. Um, have you done enough as far as immigration concerns in Arizona, in the country? You know, when I got to uh, Washington, D.C., one of the first things I realized was that Democrats don't understand this issue. And Republicans just want to talk about it and complain about it, but actually not do anything about it. They just want to politicize that. And we heard this tonight from my opponent, Blake Masters. You know, he thinks he knows better than everyone about everything. And when it comes to border security, you know, I've been focused on this. And on immigration, yes, we need comprehensive immigration reform. We have ten, tens of thousands, tens of thousands of dreamers here in the state of Arizona that are as American as my own two kids. I've got one daughter lives in Tucson. My granddaughter lives in Tucson. I think of dreamers no different. You know, my opponent, Blake Masters, on the other hand, he said he would never offer citizenship to dreamers. I think it's mean and it's fundamentally un-American. We need comprehensive immigration reform in a lot of different ways. I talk to farmers and ranchers all the time, can't get the workforce they need under the existing visa programs. And they're really struggling. I mean, you look at Yuma, and the food supply issues we have down there and the workforce issues of legal immigration, legal immigrants coming across the border to work here in the state of Arizona, adding so much to our economy. But this issue gets politicized over and over again from people like my opponent, Blake Masters. Politicizing the issue, not understanding the issue. Respond, please. Oh, I understand it very well. I understand that Mark Kelly supports open borders. And that's why we have them. He's the 50th vote in the U.S. Senate. Joe Biden needed his vote. Mark Kelly, a year ago, could have dug his heels in and said, Mr. President, I'm not supporting a single thing, not a single spending bill, not a single piece of your agenda. 
unless and until we get border security. Biden would have had to secure the border. Mark Kelly, if he's if this is the result of Senator Kelly being focused on the border, my gosh, he's the most ineffective and worst senator of all time. The border's wide open. People are walking through by the hundreds of thousands. You know, if the Mexican drug cartels, if these terrorist narcos, if they could vote in this election, every single one of them would vote for Senator Kelly because they get what they want from him, which is a complete wide open border. It's complete free reign. And again, the fentanyl is killing our children. He's not doing a gosh darn thing to stop it. Respond, yeah, the, please. The, the fentanyl is out of control and it's heartbreaking. And I've spent a lot of time down there on like Nogales and Yuma and Douglas. Uh, the head of CBP is uh, Lupe Ramirez. And we've talked extensively about this. And he showed, you know, he's, we've talked about how this gets smuggled through the ports of entry really early in my term in the Senate. So you know what I did? Went back to Washington and I got the money appropriated to rebuild our ports of entry. You know why? Because right now, if you go down there, it's 12 lanes in Nogales as an example. Only one of those lanes has the technology, the x-ray machine, that can detect the fentanyl. When we rebuild these ports of entry because of the work I've done in the United States Senate and getting this money to Arizona, every single one of those lanes will have the technology. But the only way you can do this is through bipartisanship. And it's working together, working across the aisle to get things done like John McCain did. You know, my opponent, Blake Masters, he doesn't want to work with anybody. He doesn't even want to work with Republicans. You know, he calls Democrats psychopaths and that they're evil. That's not been the spirit okay. of how Arizona senators work to the benefit of our state and our country. Time on that, but I need a response from you on the idea of working with Democrats on cooperating across the aisle. You might be able to work with Democrats like Cinema, Democrats like Joe Manchin. You can't work with Democrats like Bernie Sanders, Chuck Schumer, Mark Kelly. No, there's something very wrong with people who don't want to enforce federal law, who don't believe in borders. Apparently, they don't believe in our national sovereignty because they've turned over the entire border zone to Mexican drug cartels. And it is killing people. It is killing Arizonans. It's ruining our state. It's ruining our country. He's not doing a darn thing to stop it. And the Border Patrol understands this. Go ask a Border Patrol agent what they think of Mark Kelly. 90% of them will tell you they're disgusted by what he's failed to do. That's why the National Border Patrol Council endorsed me. The Arizona Police Association endorsed me. It's time to get back to law and order. Let's just even try. It'd be bad enough if they were trying to enforce federal law and failing, but they've just surrendered. They've thrown their hands up and thrown our southern border wide open. It's killing people. I'm sick of it. 45 seconds. Mark Victor, is, is the border open right now, and has it been turned over to cartels? Of course the border is open right now, and people can come through. There's no question about that. But the answer here is we can walk and chew gum at the same time. Yes, we can secure the border. We need to secure the border. It doesn't mean we have to build a wall. There may be other ways we can secure the border. Let's get a handle on who's coming in. But then let's let people in who aren't here for bad purposes. Let's welcome them. We are a nation of immigrants. We need, we have a demographic problem right now. We need more younger workers. And also, just a quick point on civility. We need to get back to civility. We shouldn't be calling each other names and, and, and arguing across the aisle. I agree with what Senator Kelly said here. We need to work together. People who disagree still can be agreeable. Let's sit down and have an exchange of ideas and speak like gentlemen rather than arguing and calling each other names like kids in a sandbox. All right. Um, I want to move to abortion. Uh, Senator Kelly, we'll start with you. Would you codify Roe v. Wade? Of course. Let me be perfectly clear. Arizona women have totally lost the right to make a decision about abortion. It's devastating. It's wrong. And it's exactly what my opponent, Blake Masters, wants. Blake Masters has called abortion demonic, <coughs> religious sacrifice. He's even said that he wants to punish the doctors. He wants a national abortion ban that's so strict that even in the case when a woman is raped, she will not have the option to make this decision. Now, in a second, he's going to tell you that this isn't true. But, folks, this is true. These are his words. He has supported state and national abortion bans that will deny the right for a woman to make this decision by themselves. And that's what it's about for Blake. I mean, He's only saying this now, and he's probably going to tell you something totally different. 
And it's only because he's trying to win an election. But that's what it's about for him. You know, he thinks that he should make these decisions for you. He thinks he gets to make these choices instead of you. Blake Masters, 90 seconds here um, regarding a federal ban on abortion, codifying Roe v. Wade. Where do you stand? I'm pro-life, and that means I believe in limits. Now, I support exceptions because I don't believe in being extreme on this issue. Senator Mark Kelly is the abortion radical. Senator Kelly in Washington, he voted, you know, actually he sponsored, he didn't just vote for it, he sponsored a bill that would have mandated legal abortion nationwide, get this, up until the moment of birth. Take a second to think about how truly radical that is. Mark Kelly says any abortion is okay for any reason, all the way up until the moment a baby is due to be born. He wasn't the only radical who voted for that bill. He was joined by Elizabeth Warren, by Bernie Sanders. AOC voted for this in the House. And the only countries in the whole world that support Senator Kelly's preferred no limits, extreme abortion policy are China and North Korea. So no, I'm pro-life, I believe in limits. I think we should be more like, I don't know, how about every other civilized country in the world? Just last year, Arizona passed a law that limits abortions after 15 weeks. I support that law. That's where Arizonans find a reasonable place to draw the line. I support limits at the federal level too. Senator Lindsey Graham has proposed a 15 week bill with the common exceptions, and I support that. I believe in limits. Mark Kelly believes in no limits at all. I understand why he wants to lie about my position because his own, which is on the record, he sponsored that legislation up until birth. That is so truly radical. 80% of Arizonans are disgusted by that. So I'm gonna represent the vast majority of Arizonans on this issue. He's proven that he can't. Need a response. It's nonsense. And what he's saying is absolutely not true. I've always been clear on this, that I support the restrictions and the protections that were allowed under Roe v. Wade. And abortion only happens, you know, very late in pregnancy when there are serious issues. And folks, it's heartbreaking when this happens. And often the child is wanted. But my opponent, remember what he has said. I mean, he supports a national abortion ban. I just told you I did That criminalizes, that cr you're going to get your chance, that criminalizes this decision. He has said, and this isn't like years ago, he has said very recently, that he wants to punish the doctors. He's called abortion demonic, a religious sacrifice. I don't even know what that means, folks. But what I'm doing is I am protecting your constitutional rights that you have lost because of rhetoric like this. But real quickly, um, do you, where do you draw the line on late-term abortions? Well, under Roe v. Wade, there were protections and there were restrictions that were allowed under that law. And late-term abortion in this country only happens when there is a serious problem. And, you know, that's what I support. And what he says about the legislation that I voted on is just not true. And it's nonsense. And he should go back and take a look and read this. I mean, he, you know, he's a lawyer. This is legislation. He can go take a look at it. Uh, Blake, you have said that you once espoused a federal personhood law. Uh, you is, this is a quote from you, unqualifiedly pro-life from conception. And that um, there has been, it has been noticed that some of these more strident uh, positions were taken off of your website. Some say that you scrubbed them from your website. What's going on with that? I encourage people to go read my website now. It is still the most pro-life, most detailed agenda of any Senate candidate running nationwide. I'm pro-life. I'm proud to be pro-life. I will never run from that. From, I think from pro -life, conception? I'm pro-life I'm pro as a matter of conscience. I just told you what I believe the law should be. Right? In Arizona, as a voter, I support the 15-week law with all the exceptions. I believe in federal limits. I believe at a certain point, everybody of good conscience knows. At five months, six months, my gosh, seven months, that is a baby. And we shouldn't be killing babies for no reason when they can survive outside the womb. And that's not what his legislation did. They said they were trying to codify Roe. No, it was so much more extreme than that. They wanted to impose legal abortion nationwide up until the moment of birth. And I just, that is way too radical. That's not what Arizonans want. Common sense limits. Arizona has said 15 weeks makes sense. 
I think that makes sense. And before we get to Mark Victor, real quickly, have you always supported the 15-week limit? Well, Arizona just passed the law last year, and Senator Graham just introduced the bill last month. Right. But so, my question is, have you always supported I that kind of... I couldn't support a bill nine months ago you, if it was just introduced last month. It's not the month. bill. It's the limit. Would you Have you always supported that limit? That I, kind of limit. I believe Arizona's got the right to make its laws. That's the whole point of reversing Roe versus Wade. And I believe in a federal backstop. I think at the federal level, we should not be allowing late-term partial birth abortion all the way up until the moment of birth, and except for the, you know, to save the, the life of the mother. Mark, I believe in limits. Mark Kelly doesn't. And that's the choice that Arizonans face in this issue. Mark Victor, please. You know, Ted, this evasiveness from Blake Masters is exactly why you should have a principle and stick with it. You asked him specifically, did he scrub his website? And he said, you can go to my website now and look at it. That's evasion. That's an answer that, yes, I'm not anchored in principle. I'm anchored in principle. My positions have been exactly the same for 30 years. Look, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what my personal position is on abortion, and I'm not going to tell you. We need a policy that recognizes that reasonable minds disagree on this issue. People disagree. There isn't an objectively right answer. And these politicians offer no special wisdom at all. This is why a one-size-fits-all solution is a terrible idea. We're going to be fighting about it forever. Congress should stay out of it. So I'm in favor of having hard questions like this resolved in the smallest jurisdictions. That's right. Mesa should pass a law that the people in Mesa like, and the people in Tempe should pass a law that the people in Tempe like. Abortion should never, anywhere, under any circumstances, be outlawed in the case of rape or in the case of health of the mother. We don't have enough time to get into this, but I've written extensively on this in many other issues on my website. Regarding abortions after viability, if we can keep the baby alive, we should. It's a win for the baby. It's a win for the pregnant woman. It's a win for the adoptive parents. There is no perfect solution here. We're going to be fighting about it forever. We need the best solution to get past it, and that's put it in the smallest jurisdictions. Let's stop fighting, and let's move on. Let's talk about smaller jurisdictions. Uh, should abortion laws be at the state level and not the federal level? No, I think there should be a national law that protects the rights that women have to make this decision between them and their doctor. And let me be really clear about something you asked about which was the personhood amendment. Now, folks, this is code. This is code for throwing women into jail. And that's what my opponent supports. Now, my, I think we all know guys like this. You know, guys that think they know better than everyone about everything. You know, you think you know better than women and doctors about abortion. You even think you know better than seniors about Social Security. And you think you know better than veterans about how to win a war. Folks, we all know guys like this. And we can't be letting them make decisions about us because it's just dangerous. Respond, please. I think states should decide. We let the state legislatures wrestle with, wrestle with the tough question of how to regulate abortion early on. Texas is going to make slightly different decisions than California. It's going to make different decisions than Arizona. But I believe in a federal backstop. I don't think we should let California or Oregon... Uh, let Planned Parenthood go in at eight months and 30 days and sever spinal cords and dismember babies that his policy would allow. Unlimited abortion up until the moment of birth. He still can't articulate That's a clear that. limit. I believe in limits. Arizona has said 15 weeks is a reasonable place to draw the limit, and I agree. i got to get a response to that, yeah. please. Yeah, so, I mean, the protections and restrictions that were allowed under Roe v. Wade was the law of the land for over a century, or at, for 50 years. But what we have now here in the state of Arizona, is a law from 1864. And it's exactly what my opponent, Blake Masters, wants. But have you supported six, seven, eight-month viability? Have I have you supported, supported Roe v. Wade. You know, went into effect in 1973. This is a hard decision for women. This decision should be up to the woman with her doctor. Shouldn't be politicians like the guy to my left in Washington, D.C., making these decisions for you. I mean, he thinks he knows better than you. He thinks he knows better than doctors and women on abortion. I mean, I, you know, folks, I think that's 
you know, that, that, that is a really bad place for us to be in when my opponent, Blake Masters, is making these decisions for women. All right. Uh, I want to get to um, the election. And, Blake, we'll start with you. Uh, is Joe Biden the legitimately elected president of the United States? Joe Biden's absolutely the president. I mean, my gosh, have you seen the gas prices lately? Legitimately There's no doubt. Legi I'm not trying elected. to trick you. He's duly sworn and certified. He's the legitimate president. He's in the White House. And unfortunately for all of us, right, because you know what? Yeah, Joe Biden's the president. He has been for the last two years. And everything he's touched in the last two years has turned, well, to you know what? Everything's on fire and it's Joe Biden's fault. I wish he weren't the president. He is, and that's a problem. Now, how did he get there? Okay, let's talk about that. I think it's a problem that the FBI forced Facebook, they pressured Facebook and other big tech companies to censor true information about Hunter Biden's crimes in the weeks before the 2020 election. And so millions of Americans didn't get to read about that. They didn't get to read about Hunter Biden and his corrupt business dealings with China and the Ukraine. Business dealings which credibly implicated Joe Biden. And then the media lied to us about it. They said, oh, that was Russian disinformation. No, it wasn't. It was true. And so when the media is lying to people, helping big tech and apparently federal law enforcement censor information about presidential candidates, well, I think people start to worry about the integrity of their elections. And we need to do so much better. I believe in election day, not election season. In Brazil, they just held the presidential election, I think, on Sunday. Guess what? They counted the votes, and we got to know who won that night. And here's another thing I believe that Mark Kelly doesn't. I believe in universal voter ID. Call me old-fashioned. I think that if you want to cast a vote in Arizona or America, you should have to show an ID. I That's common sense. And I'll stand up for common sense election integrity every single time. I need to follow up quickly. Was that election stolen was it rigged in any way, shape, or form enough to keep Donald Trump out of the White House? I suspect that if the FBI didn't work with big tech and big media to censor the Hunter Biden, inf or the Hunter Biden crime story, yeah, I suspect that changed a lot of people's votes. I suspect President Trump would be in the White House today if big tech and big media and the FBI didn't work together to put the thumb on the scale to get Joe Biden in there. But not vote counting, not election results. Yeah, I haven't seen evidence of that, but I'm telling you what I think the problem is. I think the problem is big tech, big gotcha. media working together. Right. Okay. Well, I, I think that's a problem. Okay. I challenge uh, Mark Kelly to say that's a problem. Uh, we will in just a second. Mark? Boy, for a guy who's never been elected before, he sure sounds like a politician to me. I'll answer the question. Joe Biden won the election. I wish they both could have lost. We could use somebody up there who could have done something different. But look, this is an easy one. All people of good faith want a free, fair, accurate, open election. And we all want only people who are authorized to vote to actually vote. I have no problems at all with reasonable requirements to vote. You should be able to get an ID. They're free. If you can't get an ID, maybe you shouldn't be voting. That's not a big deal. But I am against unduly burdensome requirements that are calculated to make it harder for people who should be allowed to vote to actually vote. But all of this is missing the big issue, Ted. This is not our problem. Our big problem with voting is that everything is up for a vote today. I don't want anybody telling me how I should use my body, my property, my money, and my time. None of that should be up for a vote. And I don't want to tell any of you how to use your body, property, money, or time. We are a constitutional republic, not an unrestricted democracy. Today, everything is up for a vote. Very little should be up for a vote. Like, for example, who should represent the good people of the state of Arizona. That should be up for a vote. What should the age of consent be? This is something that reasonable minds disagree on. That should be up for a vote. But everything else that we are voting on that has anything to do with your body, your property, your money, your time. That's what freedom is about, folks. None of that should be up for a vote. Uh, Mark Kelly, are there serious concerns over Arizona's election process, over the country's election process that were exposed in 2020? Ted, let me, let me start by saying the only reason that we're having this conversation is because my opponent, Blake Masters, put out a video questioning who won the president presidential election here in the state of Arizona. That election, let's go back to 2020, that was certified by Democrats and Republicans. You know, I'm with our governor on this, Doug Ducey, who says we do elections well in Arizona, and we do. 
80% of Arizonans vote by mail. My opponent, Blake Masters, he just said he wants to take that away from you. Uh, early in my Navy career, I was, I was in the middle of the Indian Ocean, and I was able to vote in a presidential election. There's not a lot of countries you can do that. He wants to make that an impossibility for our Arizona veterans. That's ridiculous. Do you know how many, do you know how many veterans, you know, how many people on active duty and veterans wind up getting deployed overseas? And that option would go away in his plan to just vote on Election Day. He mentioned voter ID. I'm okay with that. You know, these are conspiracies and lies that have no place in our democracy. You know, I'm worried about what's going to happen here, you know, this election in 2024. I mean, we could wind up in a situation where the wheels come off of our democracy, and it's because of folks like Blake Masters that are questioning the integrity of an election. We do elections well in the state of Arizona, and, you know, folks, it's got to stop. I encourage you to vote. Our democracy is stronger when everybody votes. My opponent wants to make that harder for everybody. Are you trying to make things harder for people no. to vote? I want to make it easy to vote and hard to cheat. I want universal voter ID. He pretends to be okay with it. He wouldn't actually support it if it came to a vote in the United States Senate. Look, of course I support absentee ballots for military service members. It's ridiculous and just a flat out bald faced lie to suggest that I don't. It's totally fine. I'm just saying, can we please count the votes and know who won on election day like a first world country? Brazil can do it. So I think we should demand no less in the United States of America. But you notice he didn't talk about the FBI working with big tech, working with the media to suppress, to censor true information about Hunter Biden's crimes, corrupt business dealings, China, Ukraine. The implica they implicated Joe Biden. But that was all pushed under the rug. Millions of people, hundreds of thousands of people in Arizona didn't get to hear about that. I'm, I, I strongly suspect that, that changed the results of the election. And unfortunately for the whole country, because look how bad we're suffering after two years of Joe Biden and Mark Kelly. Was it a question more of information not getting out or complaints that the election process itself is, quote, rigged and it allows for cheating? We, we had multiple audits of the election here in Arizona in 2020. We had a partisan audit. What did they find? It was accurate. You know, I, I find it interesting that my, my opponent, Blake Masters, is standing up for veterans here for a second because, you know, what I've heard during the last, you know, year or so is just insulting to veterans. You know, it's kind of insulting, let me just say. You know, saying our military is totally incompetent, saying there's rot in the military, you know, saying things like, you know, we haven't been in a just war since before World War II. You know, folks, let me, let me tell you what he's talking about here. He's saying that World War II was unjust. You know, we had hundreds of thousands of Americans die in that war. And I just find it pretty insulting. We've got about 500,000 veterans here in the state of Arizona. Many of them, you know, vote by mail. We've got 80% of Arizonans vote by mail. I imagine my opponent, Blake Masters, has voted by mail. And now he wants to take that away from us because he's... He, he wants fewer people to vote. I mean, that's the bottom line. Do you want to take away vote by mail? No. And Surprise? hard stop, huh? What, well, what I never a, said what, I did. What, 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 no. where, where well, is some people have good reasons to vote by mail. If you're on an aircraft carrier in the Indian Ocean, that sounds like a pretty good reason for an absentee ballot, right? What about, what about a, a suburban uh, housewife? I'd be okay with that if she enclosed a copy of her driver's license. I think that if you want to cast a vote by mail, you should at least include a copy of your driver's license. What do you think, Mark? We've been doing this for 20 years in the state of Arizona. That's a no, this has by been, the way. This has been just, it's absolutely a no. 80% of Arizonans vote by mail. This has been challenged in the courts. We have a stronger democracy when more people vote. Ted, we had a lot of people, about the we, had, we had a lot of people turn out in the last election. You know, highest turnout ever in the last election. Our governor, Doug Ducey, says we do elections well. These elections were audited by and they were certified by Democrats and Republicans, but conspiracy theories like the ones that one he's peddling is dangerous to our democracy, folks. I mean, we're on the verge of the wheels coming off of this thing. We've got to get back to a better place. All right, like you want to talk about the military aspect of what Yeah, there's said. a reason. 57% of the veterans in Arizona are supporting me right now. 72% of active duty military service members right now in Arizona are supporting me. That's what my latest internal polling says. And there's a reason for that. Yeah, I speak out and I criticize General Milley. I criticize the top layer 
of military leadership, these very political, Obama did this, right? He purged the military of so many great generals, apolitical generals, and he elevated in their place left-wing mediocrities like General Milley. You've all seen at home General Milley testifying in front of Congress, bloviating about white rage, talking about how we need to teach our soldiers critical race theory. In the United States Navy right now, they are forcing sailors to use gender pronouns. The military is not a woke social experiment. I won't tolerate that. It should be focused on lethality and projecting force to defend America and her allies. Our service members who wear the cloth of the nation demand no less, they deserve no less. And when I'm in the Senate, I'm gonna work with Tom Cotton to get rid of this wokeness. Yeah, it's a rot in so much of our military. Our troops deserve way better, and when I'm in charge, they're gonna get it. Uh, veteran, talk to us here. I mean, there's lots to talk about here. First of all, to say that because one general supported crazy wokeness in the military, and I certainly agree with Blake on this, this is not a place for political correctness. Our military exists to defend our country. But because one general said something ridiculous is not an indictment of the entire general um, officer corps throughout our military. I've had many interactions with Marine Corps officers, and I can tell you, very squared away group. I have nothing but respect for the officers that I've met in the Marine Corps. Also, General Mattis, General Kelly, people who walked away from Donald Trump and the exact same policies that Blake Masters is now promoting. These were quality generals and they had reasons to walk away from the exact same policies. Okay, uh, gentlemen, we're running short on time. We've got to talk about water and I wish we had more time to talk about this, but uh, Senator Keller, we'll start with you, uh, 45 seconds. Let's start there and see how far we go. We're facing short-term, long-term cuts of Colorado River water. How do we address this issue? And it is an issue. Yeah, it's a major issue. I mean, this is the worst drought that this part of the planet has seen in a thousand years. It's been going on 22 years. Lake Powell and Lake Mead are at crisis low levels. Uh, and we've got to take some immediate steps. I got money from Washington to help farmers keep water uh, up in Lake Mead. That's just a stopgap measure. Uh, we can't do this all on our own. Uh, we're one of three lower basin states with Nevada and California. I was on the phone recently with the California governor because they're not stepping up to help. You know, my opponent's solution to this, he wants to privatize our water. He wants to send our water rights to Wall Street. He wants to send your Social Security savings to Wall okay, Street, we, we, but our water too. And we that's, are, not, that's not a serious we are running approach on to this short problem. on time. I need a response from you and a water plan. Can you do it in a minute? Well, I, will, I think I can. Senator Kelly recently gave a news interview where he said, don't worry, our water crisis in Arizona is not existential. Well, I disagree. I'm here to tell you that it is. I was shocked and dismayed a few weeks ago when the federal government cut Arizona's water allocation, 592,000 acre feet for all you water nerds out there. That's a lot of water that the feds cut. That's our water. Guess how much California had to cut? Zero. Guess what Mark Kelly did about it? Nothing. I'm tired of Senator Kelly acting like the third senator from California. We need someone in there with sharp elbows who's gonna fight for our water. The late John McCain called for the renegotiation of the 1922 Colorado River Compact. Let's renegotiate that. I will, but you know what? We also need technology, and I can wrap this up in 10 seconds, Ted. Please do. Why is California even putting its straw into the Colorado River? That water should be Arizona's. Look at a map. California is on the Pacific Ocean. The future is desalination plants powered by nuclear reactors and pipelines. Okay. We can solve this We're problem with technology and sharp elbows. I will do it because I want my boys to be able to choose very, to live in Arizona decades from now. Very me. quickly, Mark. Not that quick. I got a few things to you know, say on this. No, it's got to be because we're running Ted, out of time. I've had very little time during this debate, and I'd like to give an answer on this well, question. But we're let not going to be able to get heard if you keep go too long. Just let, so you let, know. let me That's incorporate some things work. that Blake said. Blake made some very good points on this issue, and I'm going to give him credit. We got short-term and long-term solutions. I'm here to tell you about hard questions. Almost 80 percent of our water in this state, in the middle of the desert, goes to agriculture. Sorry, that doesn't make sense. We can put our agriculture, we can get it from places where they can more efficiently produce these goods. The market price of water should determine. And that is it, sir. I'm sorry, but it's, we, just, we just ran out of time. We've got to get to closing statements. And going in reverse order of our opening remarks, we start with Mark Kelly. Yeah, l l let me just say something, uh, uh, what my opponent said about being existential. It's not existential. We're gonna solve this problem on water. Uh, I think what folks heard tonight here were starkly different views of our state and our country. On abortion, 
my opponent wants a national abortion ban, taking away your rights, I'm going to protect abortion. I'm going to protect your constitutional rights. On Social Security, he wants to privatize it, sending your savings to Wall Street. On issues of the military, I served in the United States Navy for 25 years. I love our military. He says some pretty insulting things about our military. We have 500,000 veterans that live in the state of Arizona. Uh, serving in the United States Senate has been one of the highlights of my professional life, which has been all about service, and I would appreciate your vote. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, now the closing statement from Mark Victor. Thank you, Ted. Ted, I'm running for Senate to leave the world better than I found it. We've been on the wrong course for a long time. We have very serious problems coming. And we're at a critically important time in our history. Both the Republicans and the Democrats have given us a stalemate of ineptitude. They're recycling yesterday's ideas. How long are we going to accept their failed approaches? We can't solve these problems with the same old thinking. There is a way out of this mess. Let's focus on fundamental, timeless principles. Nobody gets to force their way of life on anyone else. Let's lead and inspire people to be good humans. Time, sir. Time, sir. That is it. It still says I got 15 seconds you, there, Ted. I, yeah, yeah. I like to finish my, my closing sir, statement. Th they told us that it was over. Finally, we hear from Blake Masters. For the past two years, under Joe Biden and Mark Kelly, we've been going in the wrong direction. Everybody knows it. You are less safe today. Your bills have gone way up since Mark Kelly took over. He's got a bunch of excuses. I think you heard a lot of them here tonight. You know, it's up to you to decide whether excuses are enough. But ask yourself, do you deserve a secure border? Do you deserve to feel safe when you walk outside at night? Do you deserve to be able to afford your own home if you work hard enough? I think the answer is yes. You deserve so much better than what we have. Mark Kelly disagrees. Otherwise, he and wouldn't have spent two years backing Biden every time. Send me to the U.S. Senate if you think that you and your family deserve better so we can go in the right direction. Thank you, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, thank you all for the debate. We appreciate it.